Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today, I would like to, well, show you how the induction in mathematics works. This is a concept that you're going to encounter in a lot of classes. I just finished my first semester, or well, at least I've taken all my exams and I've already um, passed analysis, This, which is one of the classes I actually covered this in. And then there's linear algebra, where I covered, where I covered it too. So this is, a very, this is a very common and very important part of probably any exam. And it's, uh, it can be hard depending on what task you really have to solve. But generally, there's a very, there's a system to it. So it's sort of like in school. So it's something you could probably collect credits with in exams. So I'm going to just, I'm just going to show you a very easy example, which will show you how it works. And I will probably create a few other videos that will cover harder examples. So first of all, there's a general structure, which is uh, the initial or base case. And then there is the induction step or inductive step or step case, which often includes something called the induction hypothesis or inductive hypothesis. Sometimes people separate them. So if you just started, if if you're just starting to learn this, or you never actually heard of it, and you just want to, well, get into it, this video is for you. So don't uh don't be afraid of these terms. I'm gonna show you what those really mean, and uh, just so you know, I'm gonna work with the terms base case for the first thing. Then I'm gonna actually separate the two I just named. So I'm then going to go and do the induction hypothesis. And then I'm going to do the step case. So uh, these are the terms I'm also going to pick. So let's uh, start off with uh, one equation. Why an equation that's easy? Because uh, when you use induction, you're usually proving an assertion. So something that will give you a, what in programming languages is called a Boolean. So either true, like something that's true, or something that's false. So that can be in equations, that can be something with an equal sign, or in, in equations, it can be a few things, like this, or this, or this, or this, you know, the, you know what I mean. It can be a lot of different things. Um, or well, in, uh, as for equations, it can also be this, I guess, but I've never even seen that to be proved in any, well, in any worksheet, so I think that's kind of irre irrelevant. Anyway, so let's uh, let's get started with uh, the with one assertion, which is this one. So the summation sign, or yeah, we're also gonna work with natural numbers. So our number that we are gonna work with is called n. It might be something else for you, and it's part of the natural numbers. All right, so that's uh, something we know now. And we're starting off with an assertion, which is why I just told you that's usually going to be your task. Um, or, well, in your, in what you have to do. So here we're going to say, it's, we're going to go up to n, up until n, and we're going to start with 1, because in my class, the natural numbers were not defined with uh, were defined in a way that it did that they did not include zero. That would be written down like this, you know, like this. So, uh, yeah. Um, and then we're just going to say n. And what is to be proved is that this equals the same as, or that this equals the following, which would be 1 plus any following element up until our n. So these two things are supposed to, to be the same thing and while we usually can say that this is true would because we do know that this is defined that way but this is a very simple way of proving our first thing to get started with the idea of this so let's just do that um, we're going to start with the base case i recommend learning your shorthand shorthands or just getting used to them. So in, I actually covered this class in German, so I don't know what you guys use in your class in English, but in German, I would just write down, because it's called something else, 
I would just write down for base, a uh, base case, not base case. I would just write down uh, this, which in German means something like induction beginning. In German, that means Anfang. Uh, but that's something else. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know that it might be good to learn that because you just don't have to write that stuff down. You're you probably have other worries in your in your exam. All right. So base case is the first thing we want to do, and that is usually the first element of your set that you work with. So always take care of the set you actually work with. So here it's gonna be n equals one. And we're going to write it down like that because that's not our focus. That's just something we notice. And then we write down our equation again, filling in the values. So we're going to say that summation symbol is going up until 1. And, well, that stays the same. That remains as it is. And then here we're going to say that until this. So we know, well, 1 up until 1. That doesn't really matter because that's just 1. And then we know that this thing up here, the summation symbol, that would be 1 plus, well, nothing because we can't go up anymore. So it's 1. And 1 equals 1, and that's true. That seems very trivial, trivial in, in a lot of cases that it's as easy as this. But writing it down like this already gives you a lot of credits, gets you a lot of credits. So yeah, just write it down like this, and you're good. So then we're going to get to, and you have to take care of what you're well, professor really wants from you. Um, in most classes, we separated it, and I'm getting to the induction or inductive hypothesis. So induction hypothesis, I'm just going to write it down like this, and we're going to call that IH. Um, again, look what you're professor tells you to use here as a shorthand if there is any that you can use um, because we're going to need it later and it's shorter to write it down that way. So what we what we see from this is that for, and really write it down like this, for any for any one element of our natural numbers the equation or the equation assertion. Usually you, you usually you would probably write, write down assertion, I guess. The assertion uh, from above holds true. If you if you don't want to be lazy, write it actually write it down instead of saying the equation or the assertion from above. So just write it down again, or say from like what task you got that assertion. So if it's uh, mentioned in task one, write down the assertion uh, mentioned in task one. So your professor really knows. I don't know how perfectionist your professor is, but um, I'm just saying it so you know. From above holds true. Um, yeah, exactly. So we got that. So that means it don't it doesn't really matter if it's one or five or ten as long as it's part of the natural numbers, which is the set we work with here. And we're done. We have to write that down though, because that makes it clear. That's our proof that we're doing here. And then we're gonna get to the induction um step. Well, no, sorry, to the yeah, I actually prefer the induction step as a term. But I've not seen like induction beginning or something as a term in English. And because I want to be consequent, I'm just going to call it step case, even though I don't like that term as much. But it's uh, it suits better, I guess. Step case. Yeah, so. And before we start showing it, we have to understand what that really means. Well, we now show that our assertion works for any one element as we... Uh, set here, but we don't know that if we got one element, if it works for the next. That seems really weird because that's quite obvious that it does, but um, we have to show that. And the reason this is going to work, I'm just going to take that away, is because we are working with the piano axioms here. I hope that's what it's called in English. I actually didn't look that up. I'm just going to write it down if that was wrong, like in the description below or in the comments, just look that up if that was wrong and you didn't recognize that word I just used. 
but uh, that's just uh, the way numbers are defined. You know, like you have one element and then you have a following element in that sequence. So like once, like the following element of one would be two and the following element of two would be three. So you, al you always have one element and it's following element. So we show that here that this works, that this equation, this assertion holds true for the next element, for any one element that we pick. So that's why we write down if, oops, if the induction hypothesis holds true or counts or something like that, if these, or, uh, yeah, considering that the IH holds true, something like that along those lines. Um, the assertion from above, or write it down again if you are not as lazy as I am, holds, uh, if the IH holds, holds true, the assertion from above holds uh, true, or also holds true for any following element of one element of I n. Something like that. Maybe you can actually be more precise than I am here. Um, maybe you have a better idea, but that's usually what I write down, which gets the point across. Um, what really gets the point across is the following, because we're not going to say that our n is actually n plus 1. That plus 1, because we work with natural numbers here, is, well, the following element, obviously. So step case makes sense, and you probably understood now why we're doing this. And always write this down, at least if your professor requires it, but I've never not seen that be the case, so yeah. So we're going to do that now and prove it. So we're going to write down n plus 1. I usually work with parentheses because that just tells me that I actually put something in here because it used to be n. And you know, like here we say n is this now. And this tells me that um, I just put something in here. And this remains 1. And this remains n. And this equals, this should equal, if we look up here, at one plus something till the last element, which is n plus one. But now see, like that's what we did about, um, over here, but that's not what we're doing here. In your, since you probably don't work with an iPad in your class uh, and don't have one in your exam, what I recommend doing is you put that somewhere here. You know, that's what you wanna get to. So you write down something like node, and then you say the result we want to have, or something like that, the result we want to have. We want to have something like this, so your professor knows you actually thought of something. That's what we want to show, because we want to show that this assertion still is true, which is what we say here. But that's not how we get there. We're now working with just this, and we're going to have to, well, change the way it looks until we get here. So that's what we're going to do now. And for that, you have to understand the way summation symbols work. And we know that um, if we have n plus 1, and 1 is our starting element, we're going to have any element, and we sum them all up till we get to n, and then n plus 1 our last element. So understanding that, it's obvious that you can say you just used the summation symbol from earlier, and then you just add the last element because that's the following element of what we previously had. And having that knowledge that we know this from earlier, 
we can use our and that's the trick that's always what you want to do in your exam or, or that's always what you want to do in in the mathemal mathematical induction is reuse this thing right here that's always what you have to do and oops so what we do i don't know how you didn't know that in class but i always we always did it like this you write down something like that uh, just above the equal sign and it should be it should be obvious and now this and the parentheses here can be replaced with what we previously had as an equation for that so that's something we just found and it equals this here so that means we have one plus anything till n which is here and then plus just the element, the last element. And that equals because, well, that's this here. It's the following element of this here. We can just remove that because that's this symbolizes a sequence up until the last element. And that's just as the same as writing down n plus 1, and we're done. Because that's what we wanted to prove, and that's what we just got over here. And we're done. Nice. So that's all we had to show. And that's the way in that mathematical induction works. This is a very easy example, I know. Um, but in first semesters, I'm just in my I just finished my first, so I'm not the expert here, but I just wanted to well share this. And yeah, though, so that's how it works for equations. I'm probably going to make another video that will, in which I will cover a harder example of uh, mathematical induction for, um, for equations. But I'm probably also going to do one on in equations because that's a little different. And to be honest, I did not really study that for my exam, like in mathematical induction for in equations, I didn't even like practice it once. And in my final exam, I actually had to do that. And that I actually, I did, I did actually get like, I think full points, uh, full credits on that. So uh, that's not to brag, but I just, I'm just trying to tell you that it's not too different, but I do want to show you how it, how it's done. So yeah, thanks for watching this video and I hope it helped and, um, Hope we are going to see each other again very soon. Goodbye.